What is up everybody? My name is Pete and I play music. Happy New Year! Hopefully 2021 won't be as balls as 2020 was. So to kick things off this year, I asked you guys if you'd be interested in seeing a super duper mega epic entire guitar collection video with literally every single guitar I have and much to my surprise, you guys seemed really hyped for it. I didn't actually realize just how many guitars I had until making this video. It's gotten a little bit out of control, you'll you'll see. This is gonna be a long video. Let's just jump straight into it, shall we? So this is my Fender 66 and Good grief, what a good guitar this is. I made a video about this last year, about how I got it and why I got it. Long story short, I tried one of these in Germany, came home afterwards, got mad FOMO and decided I absolutely needed one of these. And I do not regret getting one of these for a second. My first and only Fender, and it's a weird kind of Frankensteining of a bunch of different guitars. It's got a Strat neck with a 70s headstock. The body is a shrunken down jazz bass body, and it's got a humbucker with two Telecaster pickups. So it's a real mishmash. I got mine in Daphne Blue, and and promptly nicknamed this guitar Daphne. I don't name many guitars, but this one had to have a name. It's just a thing of beauty and I love it so, so much. Also, I low-key love using this in videos and posting pictures of it because I have one and Agufish doesn't. And I know he really wants one. Sorry, not sorry, buddy. So while we're on this Fender train, this is my Squire Jazz 5 Vintage Modified Bass. And yes, I know it's not a guitar, but listen. I make the rules around here. So there's not much to talk about with this, other than it's a very cheap five string bass and I needed one for recording. So I got this and I haven't changed a thing on it. Just goes to show that you don't need expensive gear to do lots of great stuff. Because since I got this, I've used it for the bass tracks on basically every single video I've done. So yeah, not bad for 200 quid. Next up is my Schecter C7 Multiscale Silver Mountain Blood Moon. Long name, pretty cool guitar though. Schecter sent this over recently and it is my first fan fret guitar. And gotta say, I'm liking it quite a lot. Fan frets are kind of always a little bit weird at first, but you do eventually get used to them. The finish on this guitar never actually comes across on camera very well. It always kind of just looks like a black guitar with a bit of red on it, but this is actually a very cool metallic kind of red lavery finish. And it's something that looks kind of very different to anything else I have. Oh, and if you were wondering, yes, this guitar definitely gents. All right, so here come the Ibanez. The Ibanezes? What, what even is the plural of Ibanez? Ibanai? My Ibanez RG2610E. Wonderfully named Ibanez, as ever. But in all seriousness, this is a killer guitar. I mean, it's metal as f One pickup, one knob, it's black. What more could you want if you're a metal player? Well, actually, maybe seven strings, but that's different. That's just me. I got this way back in 2007, I think. As with all these Ibanez guitars, I just remove the volume knob because they're always too close to the pickup. And speaking of pickups, this one has a Seymour Duncan full shred, which is actually kind of a rarity on Ibanez. This thing's been in a bunch of videos over the years. It's just like an old faithful guitar, something that I will probably never sell. Even the headstock looks amazing, like with the Perloid Ibanez logo and the binding, it just looks so good. I think these are probably my favorite necks on any guitars. Fretboard, however, could do with a jolly good clean. Look at the state of that, blimey. As with all my floating trem guitars, I put a bit of kitchen towel or tissue paper behind the springs to dampen them, and I always just remove the back plate. I actually have no idea where it is. Oh yeah, and the missing paint on the back, that's, uh, that's because I'm a total idiot and I put two guitars in one case to save space one time and yeah don't do that Ibanez Apex One. This is the signature model of Monkey from Korn. And I think it's the first seven string I ever got. When I first got it it was a total mess because the action was so high and no matter what I did I could not get it adjusted. So I sent it off for a setup from a guy called Ian Allerton. He did setups for my guitar teacher at the time and he's also done setups for Metallica. Very cool. And now it's an awesome guitar. But the coolest thing about this guitar is obviously the 69 Inlay. <laughs> Nice. Dimarzio Path 7 pickups, you can see that I've worn the edge of them down where I rest my fingers. Weird thing about this guitar is the tremolo, you can see it's got two holes for tremolo arms. And that's because it comes with something called the U-Bar, which I think is probably the most useless invention for a guitar ever. It gets in the way, stops you palm muting, I genuinely don't know what Monkey and Head actually used that for. But you can just throw a regular tremolo arm in there and it works just like normal. I lost the pickup selector cap switch thingy at a gig somewhere and just never replaced it. Oh, and I installed a tremolo no in the back, and honestly, I hate it. It just made tuning stability worse, and it didn't actually do what it was meant to. Maybe I installed it wrong, but yeah, it, it, it didn't work. So even though it's still in the guitar, it's 
it's doing nothing right now. Anyway, love this guitar. It's been in so many videos, probably too many to count. Oh, and it also has Apex on the headstock in the corn font, which is a nice little touch. My Ibanez RG550. I've probably put more practice hours into this guitar than any other. Like with the other six string RG, I just removed the volume knob because they are always in the way. The pickups in this are kind of meh, but they do the job. So you can probably see it's actually strung up backwards in something called inside out tuning, which was invented by my buddy Trey Xavier over at Gear Gods. So it's in standard tuning, but it goes from high to low instead of low to high. It's weird, but I've always loved this guitar. It's actually got the thinnest neck of any guitar I've ever played. Check this out. It's so thin. Also, I'm a real sucker for a maple fretboard and this one is Awesome, look at that. So this is a guitar that I genuinely never ever thought I would have. It's an Ibanez RG8327J Custom, and that J Custom bit means it's very special. J Customs are essentially the highest level of production Ibanez guitars, and for a while they were only available in Japan, I think that's changed now. But at the time I got this, these were very hard to find. Long story short, stumbled across this on eBay one day, and it was going for a good price, so I knew I basically had to get it. EMG 707 pickups, which are kind of eh, if I'm honest. Gonna be swapping those out soon with something else. It's got a baritone scale, 26.5 inches, I think. Unlike the Apex 7 string, which kind of looks similar. And one thing I really love about this is the offset dots on the fretboard. It kind of reminds me of the old Ibanez John Petrucci models. All right, we gotta pick up the pace a bit, because otherwise this is gonna take forever. I got a lot of guitars, okay? Don't judge me. PRS SVN Mark Holcomb signature model. This was loaned to me by PRS earlier in the year for a video, so I'm probably gonna have to give this back at some point. Baritone scale, which means it's pretty friggin huge. Seymour Duncan pickups, Mark's Alpha and Omega set, which sound very cool, very bright. They're actually covered in dust in this footage. Probably should have cleaned them before filming this. So like I said, I have no idea when this is actually going back to PRS, but I'm very, very grateful to have had the opportunity to check it out. My trusty PRS single cut from roughly around 2003. This thing still to this day is my favorite guitar. It's just special. I made a video about this recently, so I'm not gonna go too much into details. I've used it in so many videos on my channel and other people's. It was in the Hello video with Leo. It sounds so good for basically any style. It's just an all round good guitar, and I think it looks amazing. It's basically a work of art. So yeah, this is my number one guitar, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. Now, I'm not even sure I'm allowed to show you what this is. Something top secret that I'm working on, maybe. My Chapman ML1 Pro Modern. They sent this to me when I became a Chapman artist, and I have used this a lot in that time. In fact, you can see I've used it so much that I've actually worn through the matte finish where I rest my fingers. Not much else to say here other than this is a really awesome guitar. Chapman ML17 Pro Modern. And this is a very special guitar because it's actually the prototype for the production models. So if you were lucky enough to be at NAMM when these guitars launched, this is the one that was there. They sent me this after I demoed it for them down at Chapman HQ. And I basically have not stopped playing it since. It's been in so many videos. Harley Benton Amarox. These guitars are awesome. Harley Benton are mostly known for making budget guitars, and these are still budget guitars, but they're at the higher end of that budget, and it shows. These guitars are pretty darn good. EMG retroactive pickups, stainless steel frets, locking tuners, hip shot bridge. They got some real fancy stuff on them for budget guitars. So yeah, if you're looking for a metal guitar on a budget, these are pretty good, I think. Harley Benton Fusion T HH. Now, I'm not a massive fan of Telecaster shaped guitars, I've talked about that before, but this has got some really cool features to it, namely the fretboard. Look at the figuring on that fretboard, it's amazing. Harley Benton Fusion 2 something or other, it's the Floyd Rose version. And when they sent this to me, I was not expecting to like it. It's fairly cheap and I'm not the biggest fan of floating tremolos anymore, but the instant I started to play it, I felt connected to it. I can't describe exactly why. I keep this thing tuned to standard C tuning, which is arch enemy tuning, and it's just a really fun guitar to play. Real quick, I know I'm rattling through a bunch of Harley Benson guitars. I've worked with them quite a lot over the last few years. They make pretty good budget guitars and they're very, very keen to work with YouTubers. So I feel that's a win-win situation for both you and me. Ah. The headless guitar, the Harley Benton Dullahan. So I do not like this guitar. It is fine, I guess. Some people really love headless guitars. I am not one of them. I made a video about this recently. So yeah, this guitar is fine. Not sure what I'm gonna do with it though. And this is my vintage ESP MX2. Nah, wait a minute, that's wrong, isn't it? No, uh, this is a Harley Benton EX84. It just looks like the classic Metallica guitars that James Hetfield used to use. And honestly, they did a pretty good job. It's very clear to see where they were aiming when they designed this guitar. So I reckon I'm gonna throw some EMGs in this one day. And let's face it, this is the closest I'm ever going to get to being in Metallica. This is a Harley Benton Telecaster kit guitar, which has 
Seen better days, honestly. I used it in a few videos, but I took it apart again because I was gonna use it in some kind of project I was working on. I got halfway through and kind of just stopped working on that project. I don't know, maybe I'll pick it up again in future. Next is my Agile Intrepid 830. And boy, this is a big guitar. The 30 part of the 830 means it's a baritone 30 inch monster scale guitar and it regularly dwarfs me in videos. It makes me look so small. The coolest thing about this guitar is undoubtedly the bare knuckle painkiller pickup. So I have a bunch of other guitars which I couldn't actually get to because they're in storage and I'm literally not allowed to go and get them because of, well, COVID. So real quick, here's a run through of everything I currently have that I don't currently have, if that makes sense. Chapman M01 Standard Baritone. This is the only standard series Chapman I have. They sent this out to me about a year ago for a video and I'm honestly not sure if they want it back. Harley Benton SC1000, real solid beginner guitar, but it's a very, very obvious copy of an ESP Eclipse. But if you don't care about that kind of thing, it's pretty cool. ESP LTD Deviator, my one and only V-shaped guitar. This guitar is actually killer. It's a thrash metal machine, it's built like a tank. And if you like Megadeth, this is actually the signature model that Dave Mustaine had with ESP. Harley Benton RB612CS 12 string guitar. That's a mouthful. Try saying that when you're trolleyed. And I actually really like this guitar. It looks cool on camera. I don't use it that much, but if I ever need a 12 string, this is the one I'll use. My Chapman ML7. This is the first Chapman I got. I actually went down to Anderton's and bought this in person. I don't play it as much these days because it's a really, really heavy guitar. It's just a bit of a handful to use every day, but it plays really, really well. My first guitar, my Stag Strat copy. I actually have no idea what the proper model number of this is. All I know is that it wasn't cool enough for me at the time, so I graffitied all over it and put loads of stickers on it, as you do. A blues box guitar. This actually is one of the weirdest things I own. I bought it for like 30 quid for a laugh, and I ended up using it in a video a few years ago to see if it gents. You play it with a slide, not your fingers, and that body looks like it's made of wood, but it's actually cardboard. So yeah. Harley Benton CST24. Now this is another really solid beginner guitar. And yeah, I don't really have any complaints about this guitar. It, it just sounds good. It's pretty heavy. Not sure what I'm gonna do with this one. I think I might actually give it away to charity. My five pound K guitar. Now this is a cool one. Back when I was a kid, my granddad found this on a car boot sale for five British pounds. It looks just as weird as it sounds, but I actually really like this guitar. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't play very well, but it has a charm to it that nothing else I've played has. Epiphone Explorer Limited Edition in Pewter. Now I have to say, this is a terrible guitar. It feels like it's made of chipboard and it's neck heavy. I swapped out the pickups for a Dimebucker and actually almost ruined the guitar by leaving it placed on the soldering iron. It literally burnt a hole into the guitar. It was an accident, but yeah, don't do that. Harley Benton CST24 HB, and that HB stands for hollow body. And I gotta say, this thing looks amazing. Again, it's a really cheap guitar, but it looks really good. Silvertone P-Bass Copy. Got this from a local music shop and just like the Squire Bass, this is another really solid cheap bass guitar. Now this is my homemade wooden spoon guitar and as you can see it's literally made from a wooden spoon. It's a weird Frankenstein of a bunch of things and it has a cigar box pickup that's wired directly to the output. My PRS Santana SE. This was the second guitar I ever got and I played the absolute crap out of it. Next up I have a couple of acoustics which I very very rarely play, but they're there if I need them. One is a Pearl River and the other one is a Freshman. Ibanez GRG M21 MMPL. Blimey. This is a three quarter size kind of mini guitar that I actually bought specifically to tune up. And actually it's a very shreddable guitar. My PRS Tremonti SE. I don't play this that much and I'm honestly not sure what to do with it. Maybe I'll use it as a mod project one day, change out the pickups, do some things to it, we'll see. Now this is a guitar that I made for my GCSEs when I was at school. It's a really weird shape, but I still still sort of like it. It definitely looks like it was designed by a 16 year old. Ibanez RG350DX. Now I don't have any pictures of this because it's not actually been in any of my videos. It's in a box somewhere because the tremolo is broken. Maybe one day I'll replace that and get it going again. And last but not least, I have some weird Union Jack acoustic, which again was a car boot sale find. It's real weird, you don't need to see it. How many guitars is too many? Asking for a friend. So I didn't really know how many guitars I actually had. I thought it might be a like a big number, but I didn't think it was that big. I think I'm gonna have to get rid of a few. Anyway, Happy New Year, everybody, and thank you for watching, and I will see you next week. As usual, subscribers up there, hit that if you wanna see more videos, and consider checking out my Patreon over there for tabs and backing tracks. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, my name is Pete, and I play music.